In this IG app tutorial, you'll learn about radio buttons in Android, which allow users to select an option from a set. So in this example over here, it asks the user for the favorite fruit, and they can then select one of the three options shown over here. When they, uh, one of the radio buttons is clicked on, a toast is made showing that selected item. And also when the app was first launched, it showed the default option that was selected. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is head on over to activitymain.xml and have a relative layout and just a uh, text view to display the favorite food text. Now what we're going to do is create a radio group element which will contain our radio buttons. Within our radio group, we'll create the radio buttons, the options for the users to choose. So our radio button will um, basically have an ID and some text. And I've created a radio button for Apple. So in the design tab, you can see the radio button over here. I'm going to copy this and create two more buttons, one for um, orange and another one for a banana. And you can see by default, the orientation of our radio group is vertical. The buttons are arranged vertically. Inside the radio group, we can add an attribute called Android um, called orientation and set this to horizontal if we wanted the buttons to be horizontal like so. I'll just leave it at vertical, which is a default and I will change the IDs of these radio buttons so they're each unique. And now over here, we have our radio group and then the three radio buttons within it. With our layout complete, we can go over to the main activity to handle listening to clicks on our radio buttons. So we'll create a variable for our radio group and we'll call this variable radio group. And now we will set an on check change listener on this radio group which allows us to listen to changes uh, in radio buttons in this group. So what the onCheck changed method provides us with is an integer number over here. And this integer is the ID of the radio button that is clicked. So for example, within our group, if option two was clicked for orange, that's what I would be equal to. It would be equal to the ID for this radio button over here. So now that we have this ID over here int i, what we can do is we can say radio button so this is the actual radio button that was clicked, equals find view by ID. And then for the ID, we can pass an I because that's what was, uh, that was what was changed over here. And now we can make a toast to display the changed item. And now we can run our app to see the changes. Now our app has launched and when I select a radio button option over here, it will, the app will make a toast displaying the selected radio button selected orange, selected banana, and so on. Now by default, when our app first launched, none of these radio buttons were selected. If we wanted to provide a default radio button to be selected, we can go over to our XML file. And the radio group has an attribute called a checked button. And over here, we can provide the ID of the radio button that we want to be checked by default in the beginning. So I'll select the radio button for orange, which has an ID of option two. So that's why I can come over here and then provide ID option two. And now when we launch the app, um, it's good by default, the orange, uh, the radio button for orange is going to be selected. And we can see that over here. If we wanted to get the selected radio button inside of our radio group without having to set an on check change listener, we can do that as well. Radio group has a function called get checked radio button ID, which provides us the ID of the radio button that's currently checked just like this variable i over here does inside the function. So we can say that this is equal to id, and then we can create a radio button variable that's a, a called default button. So this is the button that's already selected by default when the app is first launched, and this will be equal to find view by id id. And we can copy this code over here to make a toast saying the default is going to be default button dot get text. And let's relaunch our app. So now when the app is launched, you can see that it will make a toast saying that the default selected radio button is orange because we specified in our XML radio group element that we want the checked button to be the our orange. And inside of our main activity, we're using this function to get the selected radio button. One last thing that we'll play around with in this tutorial is disabling the radio buttons when the user clicks on them. So instead of our on check changed method, the radio button has a function called set enabled. We'll use this function to disable the radio buttons as the user clicks on them. And inside of our toast, instead of saying selected, we can say disabled. Now let's relaunch our app and take a look at what this does. 
over here the app has launched and now when I select the Apple radio button you can see that it's grayed out and the color has disappeared because it's disabled. If I select orange that's also been disabled and banana it's disabled. So now I've disabled these three radio button options and I cannot select them again. In this tutorial you learned about radio buttons in Android and some of their useful attributes. If you found this tutorial useful please make sure to subscribe and share the channel with friends. See you in the next tutorial.